Ladies and gentlemen, can you hear me? No. Obviously not. Hello, 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 hello. Um, right. Sorry to hurry a little bit because we're trying to make up for lost time earlier on. So we all set for we can find our seats. And um, right. Let's continue with the second part of the session this morning. We're going to have uh, first of all uh, Matthias Arias. Who? Aria, sorry. Aria. Uh, we're going to talk about claims, I believe, isn't it? Yeah, more than claims about the legal frame in the, in the There you are. Yes. Good. Over to you. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. First of all, thank you, Via Conservación, for inviting me here to do this presentation. I'm a lawyer. Maybe it's a kind of unusual to see a lawyer in this industry, and I, I would like to speak in a different way of what Francisco did. I'm more looking for the responsible of losing or all those... Uh, fruit that has been, uh, has been waste. Huh? That's the way that we, our, the lawyers in this industry in some ways we think, to look for the responsible and, and prevent claims. First of all, let me introduce myself. Okay, our law firm was founded in 2004. We are more than uh, 14 years practicing law in the produce. We are being specialized in this industry. Uh, all our lawyers speak the, the same language as the growers exporters. We advise our clients in different uh, issues like, for example, commer international commerce, specialized in produce. Second, uh, water, water rights, which is very important in, in our country, uh, in Chile. Third, uh, issues regarding maritime and insurance claims, and uh, as well as other uh, issues like uh, intellectual property related to the patents and varieties, and environmental law, um, labor law, everything related with the, with the industry. We work uh, with more than uh, probably 120 exported companies on a regular basis in Chile and Peru. Uh, we have offices. Uh, yeah, okay, we have offices in, uh, in Chile and Peru. And, uh, and in, in, uh, in Lima, we are being more, in more than eight years there, so we are working with the most important uh, exporters <coughs> company from Lima. Okay, so we have a very clear picture about what is going on with Chilean exporters and, uh, and uh, Peruvian exporters. We have also clients in Latin America and other countries like Argentina, Central America, and we work as well with importers from, uh, from Europe, uh, some other from uh, China, from the US, and especially the US. Uh, so we have a very clear picture of the, this industry. Uh, we have uh, an, an office in China, very new one, office in Guangzhou, and we, are open, we, are, we have in mind to open an office in California in the near future. So let's move forward. Based, the way that we ga uh, give our services to our clients is basically, basically uh, focus on the prevention. We try that our clients work preventively. In some ways, the same way that you do when you, when you sell the, your products, when you, we're trying to make them react previously, not react afterwards. And, and that's uh, it's a very complicated task some, sometimes. So, but uh, right now I think we are being uh, doing some changes in the industry, uh, and we see more formality as well in the industry. More people are willing to sign agreements. That's a way that we consider a way to uh, resolve future controversies between the parties and, and resolve issues like how you will resolve the the, the <coughs> claim between the parties, which is basically using uh, an arbitration system and a specific law that should be applied. So we develop a system uh, named ACE that we use with all our clients. Uh, and it's a very, very quick way to uh, respond the needs for clients. 
For example, we have a client in Peru, Camposol, that they request a lot of contracts to us. We have in 48 hours a contract, basically using a system that we have in our in internet, where they answer a few questions, and, uh, and, and one of the most important ones is know exactly with whom they're dealing with. So they put the name of the importer, and we have a tracking information about the importers that has problems, that has faced controversy in the past, <coughs> named Raymond's. So they know exactly with whom they're dealing, if they, there's someone that is facing problems right now, and then they start answering some questions very important for us, like which is the way that they're selling? They're selling on a fixed price, free consignment, uh, minimum guarantee, price after sales, the four most famous way to sell the fruit in, in, in the world, okay? So th those will create us, uh, when they answer that question, then we know exactly the way that we need, we need to start drafting that agreement. And so we put that agreement on the draft in internet. They, they know exactly the lawyer that is taking care of this, who is the, uh, the, the lawyer who is reviewing this, all the changes on the same, and on, on, on the on the website and everything is very, very easy. So that, using that, that system we are being, um, with, even that we have an office, for example, in Peru, talking about distance, all our uh, drafting is done in Chile with our team, as well in Argentina and Central America. So this, the, the, this has been a very reliable tool to, uh, to create uh, ways to prevent future conflicts with importers. And this is so, it's very, very important because at the end you will see and I will explain you why it's so important. Let's see, uh, first of all, let's see uh, an, an example of a case. Okay. Uh, okay, I would like to show you an example of a case. I, I, I was thinking something that we have uh, faced very newly. Uh, as you know, Chile is exporting uh, cherries and we have been facing this season an incredible increase of, on, on the volumes of cherries. We, f we went from, uh, mainly to China, we went from 18 million cherries boxes from the season, the previous season, 2016-17, to the current season we are near to 32, up to 35 million cases, almost a double. And all of those has been shipped to China. Uh, and, and almost all of them has arrived previous, these last two weeks, previous the season, uh, the new year, uh, Chinese New Year, okay? So it's very important to understand. And I, well, I would like to put to this example that really shows clearly the way that, that, that a grower, shipper can face uh, huge problems. We have a, a case of an of a exporter from, from the south of Chile <coughs> who has uh, near 200,000 cases. And he decides he's a very good exporter. He do everything that a, a, a grower exporter must do. He grows the, the fruit okay, uh, take all the measures necessary to prevent, okay? Use, use uh, first of all, hire uh, 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 transportation insurance, he found uh, an importer from China and sent the 200,000 cases to China, full production there. How he, he met uh, his importer? He met his importer in Hong Kong in the fruit logistica. Uh, someone introduced him uh, and he, he thought it was good. They gave him good reference, so he decided to export to this company. But uh, we said that he took all the measures. As well, he took uh, uh, credit insurance for, for his operation, <coughs> and they gave him some nice amount of credit for that company, which is very unusual to China. In China, Gerald doesn't, credit insurance doesn't give a lot of credit, very little bit of credit, uh, a lack of information that's created a huge amount of problems on the shipments, because there's no information about importers. So in that specific case, our client was happy shipping, he deal, what was the way that, that he negotiated and get a deal? He get a deal of fixed price. They gave him $30 per case, 50% pay in advance against the L, and the 50% will be paid 30 days after arrival. Everything was fine, he received the money, but then after arrival, he passed 30 days, he didn't receive the money, 40 days, nothing, 45 days, he was so nervous, start calling the importer, he decided to do a harsh email, and then the importer said, 
Don't forget, he sold it $30. But in that moment, it was so much fruit in the market, then apply the rule, the classic rule in this, in this industry. When you have a lot of fruit, the price will start to have problems, specifically, even though you have fixed price, mainly because this is a perishable product. And depends on the amount of uh, the offer of fruit, this will be the amount or the size of the loop that the importer will take. And in this case, took the biggest loop in the world and then start finding a lot of problem on the fruit. But the problem is to never mention that the, that the fruit arrives with problem uh, at a, in, a, in a decent time, which is decent, three days after arrival. The time necessary to call a, a, a surveyor and fulfill with the regulation of the insurance company. So it passed 30 days. When he asked for the fruit, the fruit was sold. But he said, sorry, I can't pay you the 50% in that amount that you were expecting, $15, because your fruit arrived not good, arrived with con condition problems. Well, so he sent him a, an inspection, uh, some notes of a quality control inspector. It, it is the same of a, of a surveyor? No, it is not the same. So what he has to do, he said, OK, I'm not going to argue more with the, that importer and call directly to the uh, credit insurance company. So he called the credit insurance company. What happened? The credit insurance company started checking everything and said, OK, I see a controversy. What? Well, yes, I see a controversy, so we can't pay you. We don't pay controversies. We just pay non-payment or, or bankruptcies. So you're not, you're not going to be paid. What I will do facing this situation? And the problem was he didn't, he wasn't uh, well, uh, I think, uh, advised because he didn't have any way to resolve a conflict. He would have to go to China, to a port in China, with a, with a judge that doesn't know nothing about fruit, nothing about how to do, and forgot that exist ways to resolve conflicts in the world. A specialized, uh, fast, uh, inexpensive, uh, which is, for example, use the Chinese, Interna Chinese Economic uh, Trade Arbitration Commission, for example, or CAFL, or we talk about that. He didn't use that. So at the end, he was in deep problem, and, and at the end, probably, he accepted the last offer done by this uh, importer in order to get the money. Just wanted to explain to you about this case because it's something that happens currently in this industry. Because people don't take measures before, in advance, not prevent. And I think you face the same type of problem in your business. So I, want, I would like to see this that I'm showing you um, about the, the prevention. Okay? First of all, when I say credit assessment of a business partner, <coughs> it's very important to know with whom you're working with. There's too many importers outside and too many that are not very good, some of them very not reliable, and, and some others very good. But all of them they have different ways to work. Uh, the credit insurance, which is very important. We'll see I will explain more about the credit insurance, uh, how do, do they work, but, but in, in this industry the credit insurance without nothing, without a contract, is nothing. Really it's very complicated because we're talking about perishable products. And sign a contract. Okay. okay? So I would like to, sh to explain you, and I think this is very important for you that you are involved in, the, in this industry, to know exactly the different way of selling. Huh? We will start first of all with the, the way of selling, which is the heaven for the importers, which is the free consignment, free resignation, some people said about free consignment, because at the end you are choosing a, an importer who, are, who will act as an agent of you. He will represent you, will act on behalf of you, but he's not enforced to obtain certain results. He must obtain, uh, do a good job. Commercially, if it's low, the average, pr uh, average price of the market, of course, you won't like to work again with him. It's a commercial sanction that we'll face, but not a legal sanction. For example, in the, in the case of the US market, the, which is the most I can tell you, I think it's the most uh, developed in terms of legislation in the world. They have the PACA law, uh, and, and they have regulated this very much. That's why probably they, they one of the 
most important country in terms of user-free consignment because it's a lot give a, a someone as an agent. For example, I was telling you about legislation. It's so why the results that a person under free consignments that can get, that for example, could be lower the average price of a shipping price, certain country, for example, Peru, for grapes, below 50% of the, t the, the average price, and that would be, the, that, that would, would be his frame. So he, he goes, if he goes below that, uh, that frame, will be considered that he's acting in, with negligence uh, and will be liable. But he's, he's a very wide uh, way of working. So he could be 50% less than the, the average price and won't be liable. Because he's a, designate someone as an agent is so important. It's someone that must be under your trust and that requires an agreement and requires many, many things. And for example, if you think about, we were talking about the, who faced the losses of the fruit. The losses would be always faced by the shipper, the exporter, and never by the importer because it's an agent. That's a matter of problem. They will face the shipping. The, the, the shipper will face the problem. And that's a, an issue which is very, very important to analyze. Sometimes it could be negligent in terms of uh, getting too much fruit, for example, or there's a many prohibition for example for, uh, for an agent like reconcile or <coughs> sell to people related with them uh, sell in a sell for example in an auction all those are prohibited okay but to be clear so what is the other way to selling uh, and I I would like to mention one which is very unknown nobody knows <coughs> much about that which is price of the sales. In my opinion, it's the best way to sell, which is a way where you, you can, because the free consignment has a good thing, uh, don't forget, you're taking the price from the market, which is important. We avoid all of the other problems that we mentioned in China regarding fixed price when you take the price from the market, because you're not, nobody is um, committing any mistake, nobody is losing in some ways because you're taking the price from the market. There's other way to lose. Uh, but, but in this case, what I'm talking in free consignment and the price of yourself is a way where you you're selling the fruit, not in the free consignment. You're not selling; you're consigning as an agency. Here, you're selling the fruit. Someone is buying, but the price is not defined yet. Will be defined by the market after discount uh, certain uh, issues. When you discount all, then you will have build your price. But it's important in terms of the risk. Who will face the risk of losing the, the fruit? In this case, the importer will face the, uh, the, the losses of the, of the fruit. When they receive the fruit in a period of time of three days after arrival, they consider that the fruit is, is fine, doesn't have any problem, condition problem, <coughs> receive the fruit without claims, then he will be responsible for something which doesn't happen in the frequent time. And in this case, for example, if, if, if this is very important, if the importer doesn't um, achieve at least at least the average price of the market, he will be liable. He, the minimum, there's a minimum guarantee with price of the sales. The minimum guarantee will be the average price market. So that makes it a very <coughs> interesting way of selling. And, uh, and, uh, and make it e easier for any exporter to use this way of selling um, in if they have uh, frequency, uh, if they have uh, credit insurance, because credit insurance, the institution <coughs> doesn't work very well with the frequent assignment because at the end, what they are covering is just the 90 percent or 80 percent of the total value of the liquidation, and you are upset with the liquidation. You, are, you don't like the liquidation, so the problems came before that. So the only thing that works is in case of that the the importer face a bankruptcy, but there's other ways to resolve that. So I want to, uh, really I, will, I would like to transmit you that and, and then move to the, uh, the other ways of selling. <coughs> uh, the, the ways of selling are, are very typical in, in certain areas. Uh, for example, the frequent assignment I said, very typical in the US. Price of, price of their sales is worldwide, but very unknown. We would like that have more known. And we have as well 
fixed price, which is very used in the export to China, to Asia in general, and Latin America, or Russia, for example. But Europe is more used the minimum guarantee, which is a combination of, of a free consignment and, uh, and fixed price. Because the agent, in this case, in case the European case, is so, uh, really trusts itself, uh, itself so much that will say, okay, I, I can have a performance guarantee for you. I can achieve this. And I can offer you this. So people will, uh, and they assume that. You say, I'm so good at this that I can achieve this amount and I face this. If I can't get this price, I will pay for it. And the rest that go over will go under free consignment, payment, paying a commission and, 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 and all the, the benefits that uh, obtain an, impo uh, an importer based on that uh, condition. Uh, so, Let's move forward. So that's the difference that exists between all the, the, the typical uh, way of selling. So we, we need, uh, when, when we have, when I said a contract, which are the typical issues that you need to consider in a contract? We said way to resolve the conflict, uh, uh, law applicable, the way of selling that we mentioned, the different ways of selling. Uh, uh, and there's uh, many other issues that you may consider. For example, something that is quite related with you. For example, it's very common that people um, request that importers uh, exercise some duties, for example, to recover the temperature <coughs> recorders as a duty for the importer. The duty for the importer to, to call uh, the official surveyor of the, of the maritime company. Uh, and do a joint inspection with the shipping line in case of a claim. Or there's many other uh, duties that sometimes are not res not responded by importers that really could cause a lot of damage to the exporter. For example, we establish a certain period of time of three days necessary in order to present a claim. In some occasions, we, what we said is, any claim presented after three, uh, three days, uh, after receiving the, the cargo, the shipment by the importer, will be considered as an invalid claim. <coughs> so we will not accept any claim after. And something that is accepted. 72 hours is the regular time considered for, uh, uh, for the almost all the German insurance policy, which are the most famous in, the, in this industry and probably the majority of them. So there's many, many issues quite important to mention before. So that is a way to resolve future controversies between the parties. So uh, we talk about arbitration system. I would like to mention one arbitration system that exists in, the, in North America. DRC, Dispute Resolution Corporation, is an arbitration center created under the NAFTA agreement and involve the US, Mexico, and Canada. Uh, and this system is very, very special. People become member of the DRC, and then all the, the trade that exists between these countries, but as well as <coughs> foreign uh, countries that export to these countries, or they do business with, with brokers that are, for example, in, nor in, in North America, but we import with uh, third parties which are in China, then you can use uh, DRC. And the DRC, fulfilled with some important uh, issues uh, on, in this industry, which is have uh, an organization specialized in the produce industry, reliable, very low cost. We, talk, we can say that uh, controversies below 50,000 uh, US dollar could be handled in a, in a period of time of 30 days with an arbitration, very limited in terms of amount of money and, and cost. Or, uh, or over 50,000, you have an arbitration system with a demand, country demand, and, and, and it will take a little bit more, more time, but less, less time than a regular case in a, in a regular jurisdiction. Yeah. Uh, there's another one in, a, in, in Europe that I think is, has more, less limitation in terms of with whom they work with, which is the CAIFL, Camera is Central arbitrage, fruit, legume, under the, the 
the Chamber of Commerce of Paris. Uh, you don't have to belong to this organization like the, like the CRC. You must uh, put the arbit arbitration clauses in your contract. And that will be enough to give them jurisdiction to the uh, to this uh, arbitration center. In international commerce, pe all those people ask me, hey, you need to sign in front of, front of a notary contract? No, you just need to sign it and send it by email. That's enough to show that you signed that agreement and, and, and then you are liable or will be enforceable that agreement. There's another trade arbit uh, arbitration system, STN, Safe Trade Network, for products that, uh, that also what they do is to have members uh, to become part of this organization, and then if you're a member of that organization, your counterpart as well, then you have a way to resolve the conflict, basically using CFL or other, uh, okay, other way of resolving conflict. But this organization uh, uh, helped a lot in order to uh, face the problem through mediation first. Uh, and if that requires the, that both parties agree on the mediation. But otherwise, if it doesn't work, you can go for arbitration only in case that previous the case, both parties have signed an agreement or have signed the membership to these organizations. So let's talk about uh, dispute uh, in maritime claims, OK? Uh, that's another way of uh, resolve conflicts, uh, of, of, of disputes, which are very common. Uh, and I think you're may maybe you're more <coughs> familiar with, OK? Uh, the, this type of uh, problems occur uh, very often, very often. So, so people need to have uh, implemented a, a procedure for, for this. The majority of the people has a, 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 an insurance uh, policy. So with that having an insurance policy, they, they receive some uh, certain procedures from the, co the company that helps them to be more organized and solve uh, future controversies. Uh, but there's other people that doesn't know that they, even that they don't have a transportation uh, insurance, they can claim anyhow. They can go uh, against the vessel line and, and, and request um, and, and start the proce uh, claim procedure. We see today more and more companies, shipping lines that has claim, claim procedures online that people can use the system and present the claims. And the trends, we, we, we see the trend, like for example, what is doing MERSC, MERSC right now regarding the temperature control online, where they can, they're offering free access to people that sign an agreement, free access to the temperature online which, in my opinion as a lawyer, I, may say, I said, you should always keep your own temperature recorder, because otherwise it's a, they, they control the information. There's no one independent, even that is online, and maybe it will be very helpful, but it's not to enough to replace your own temperature recorders. So, so it's very important to know very well how to handle this situation. There's times, there's, uh, there's status of lim limitations here. There's a uh, procedure necessary to do. You need to call your survey, uh, official surveyor. You don't have a, a, a company, a, a, an insurance policy for, for, for transportation, then you may contact a, a one a surveyor from a list. I don't know, the Crawford list, for example, which is almost in all the world. And you can uh, call them and get your, your report, because otherwise, will be so difficult for a specialized lawyer in, a, in a maritime to claim against the vessel line if you don't have a survey report. So, since, as Francisco said regarding temperature, uh, temperature, 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 five times, I think uh, it is very important the issue of the temperature. But in, in, our, in our perspective as a lawyer, it's very difficult. The temperature is a, is a gray zone for ourselves. It, you, you see better cases in, a, in the black or white zone when, for example, when you have a spoilage of water or, or definitely uh, the, 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 the container didn't work completely, it was not connected. But 
But in general, when you face uh, claims of temperature, you see always like little breakdowns that really will affect the, the shelf life of the product. But, uh, but people, sometimes, you see many little breakdowns, and th then you could argue that, that that's the case. That will affect finally my, my shelf life. But sometimes you see breakdowns, <coughs> big breakdowns, that really goes below the temperature that, that you put in your booking, which is very important, the temperature that you indicate in your booking. Table grades, for example, zero or no, minus no, zero degrees. Uh, if they go over on a certain period of time, then with a proper uh, help of, a, of an expert, you can prove that that really affects your shelf life, and then you have, you have a case. But, but in general, the, the surveyor, especially official surveyor, which are those that are paid by the, by the, the insurance company, I never are so clear when they are talking about temperature, right? I see so many issues sometimes they, that they argue that are inner and biased behind uh, <coughs> maybe this temperature of uh, really what they, what they do is just to trigger the, the problem. Huh? So, but what, what is first, the temperature or the, or the inner environment that was inside the that specific product. So it's quite interesting. And I, and I, and I, and I think that we, s we see so many, probably the majority of the cases are in that area, in, the, in temperature. Huh? But also we see a lot of uh, delays, delays that affect. Mm -hmm. And people requested to get the, the market price on that, on that period of time. And there's limitation, legislation that establishes limitation in terms of the, of the, of the liability of the, the, the shipping lines in terms of the, 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 the value that they should, that the exporters should get, but never get because of arrive late. For example, typical case, someone who is shipping before New, New, Chinese New Year and doesn't arrive on the 16th, you, you arrive two days after, then you have a big loss. Who will face that? Uh, or example, some certain period of time in the U.S. they have the, the, the they have a, in April, for example, for the table grade, they have a limited time. After that, then you have, you need a USDA uh, approve the U.S. number one, and, and that creates huge problems. Or India, certain period of time where you can get in without paying a taxes or less taxes than if you arrive after that. You see many different ways where a delay can cause a big damage. Uh, so yeah, of course, the label means fruit that will need more uh, force and will need uh, will need strength, necessary strength to arrive in good condition at the cons consumers, and that will also has a, a, a direct relationship. Uh, so it's very important to get. Uh, in case of this, get a surveyor, not a quality inspector. There's difference between both. An inspector, who, an inspector is someone that will take a picture, will say that this is the problem. I will show you the fruit with a pro the fruit with problem. Will say this is take some measures of it, but will never look the answer of what, why this happened, and who is the responsible, and what is the value of the claim. That is the task of a surveyor. They must, a surveyor must prove the cause of the damage and the amount of the damage and suggest, for example, mitigation measures. All those belong to the action of an, uh, a surveyor. We talk about this temperature. What happens when the, when, when the fruit has a, an inner and the and the temperature triggers the problem? What, what comes first? Temperature? My opinion, temperature. All the fruit has certain, certain problems, but, but temperature, if you affect the temperature, then you will affect all the problems, the ethylene, and, 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 and then you will, uh, will generate a lot of trouble at the end. So, well, we have other ones, strikes, mechanical breakdowns, collision, climatic events. Uh, how do you resolve this? This is uh, it's interesting. The, the, 
there's different rules. There's the Hamburg rules, for example, the Hack Bisbee rules, Rotterdam rules. Uh, for example, Chile and South Africa, we have the Hamburg rules, and some uh, countries in Africa which doesn't have uh, coast has the same rules. Very old, but very beneficial for shippers. For example, we have a limitation of, a uh, statute of limitation of two years. The rest, they have just one year to present the penny. We have the, the right, and, and I, I will tell you this, you will never believe me, right? but, but, but it's, uh, it's true and, and, and it happens. For example, Chile and South Africa, we have, having these hammer rules, we can arrest vessels. For example, uh, uh, some of the ship to Hong Kong uh, from the US, California, they ship chairs to Hong Kong and they face a problem. Uh, but they decide to, to uh, arrest a vessel in Chile. But the, the, vessel that caused, the vessel that caused the problem never passed through the Chilean coast. But a sister vessel passed to our coast. We call sister vessels not, not only those that are managed by the same company, or not, not the same renter or owner by the same company. It could be also managed by the same, same company, the, the same ship owner, and that's enough to present and arrest a vessel. So we arrest the vessel in Chile, very easy. It takes uh, 48 hours, present the claim to a judge, go talk with him, then you can arrest the vessel. Can you imagine what happened when you arrest the vessel? <laughs> the, the, the Chilean, uh, in this case, the Navy goes, take the vessel, uh, they, they said the captain, you must go down with us. Now we, we are handling the the vessel and then all the tripulation, every, everyone, all the crew, all take them down to the port. And they need to wait until the uh, PNI club decide to deposit the amount of the money owed, uh, exactly the amount of money, or they look for a, a settlement in order to resolve this. So it's it's atomic bomb, of course, because at the end, probably will never chip your game. <laughs> To that exported, but at, but at the end it's very very uh, useful and it works very well. So I just show you the example of Chile, which is very <laughs> unique. But every legislation is different. Uh, so maritime claims, you need to check the DL, and the DL you will find the way to resolve your conflict. Some of them they have majority of the companies, shipping lines has the jurisdiction in, in London or New York. The majority. Some other, for example, those that has humble rules, doesn't matter what the BL said, doesn't care. If it goes against the Chilean legislation, for example, South African legislation, it doesn't matter, it doesn't count. Always Chilean fruit or, or shipment that departed from Chile or arrived to Chile will be subject to the Chilean legislation. And the good thing here, and as well as many other uh, legislations, we have arbitration as a way to resolve conflict. This is not taken by the court, regular court. This is an, a specialized uh, issue and requires a specialized uh, uh, judge. So, so we see alternative in, in court, which is very good. Uh, with specialized justice generally is faster, promote conciliation among those involved. I spoke to you regarding the, the, the arbitration in Chile. And, uh, and it's very interesting that in this industry in general, um, when, you, when you present a claim, even maybe you are not a lawyer, so, uh, just a, an exporter, and you, have, you face some damage, and you want to resolve, always will depend on the time, effort that you you apply in this, uh, if you call them a lot, if you send them letter, or you're showing some uh, interest in resolving, of course, you will be able to resolve this. If you if you give this to a specialist, you have more chances to recover. Uh, they are. So, so I remember once uh, I came uh, handled from from a chicken line. He said that something that really. Show, give me an idea about the way that they handle because they have so many claims and uh, uh, he, 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 he saw himself like uh, receiving a claiming and he throwing the claims to a, a garbage 
uh, all the time. <laughs> but those that are sent more, maybe he put more attention on, the, on those. So uh, at the end, yeah, it depends on the effort that you put on, on the claims. Yeah. Uh, well, some cases, as I mentioned, some cases will be subject to judicial case and some others uh, won't be. Yeah? Uh, but I mentioned you regard the, the <coughs> vessel arrest and the importance that the vessel arrest has because it's a powerful tool. But, uh, but in, in general, uh, you must consider the statute of limitation. The here is one year, it's not two years. Two years is the statute of limitation generally in case of Chile or those that has hand rules. Uh, um, and the importance of being resolved by an arbitrator uh, in, in this period of time. And there are some limits regarding <coughs> the amount that could be considered for being uh, taken care by, <coughs> by a judge. Let me see. Uh, <coughs> right. This is uh, talk about the Chilean way, which is always by um, 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 the, the, res the resolution of these cases will be done through a, an arbitration, but the court designates them the arbitrators. If the parties doesn't agree between themselves to find an arbitrator. Um, regarding, you need to consider as well the claims that could may happen during transport ground transportation. Those have different ti uh, time to resolve, in this case, six months. Uh, uh, conflicts are resolved in ordinary courts. Air claims, in quite interesting. Which, if I have a claim with an international airline, what I need to see? The Montreal Convention. All the majority of the country has approved that, uh, that convention in order to, to regulate the transportation of cargo. Um, deadline, time of limitation is two years. Uh, and this is almost in all the countries, it's carried in a, in a regular court. So, some of the conclusions that may, we may take uh, to today uh, in uh, this very unusual presentation. I bet you that I never see a lawyer in <laughs> this type of uh, presentation, but, uh, but really it's, uh, it's something which is very important. First of all, um, the importance of, uh, of be um, in some ways, part of a, of, of a system regulated with a framework. I used to hear all the time that people said, no, this, is the, this business is, is, uh, is based on trust. Yes, it's based on trust, but it's changing in some ways because so many uh, mistakes, so many people are losing money. So we need, I, I can't conceive, uh, I can't think in a, in a business <coughs> with that, that uh, move such amount of money that this industry does, who doesn't have regulation and a certain frame. So get at least a minimum frame for your business, uh, a minimum of formality on your business. Always the, the people that give the credit should be aware uh, and, and be worried about to whom they're giving the credit. So growers, shippers, they must be aware of this and your clients at the end. Second, uh, advantage of the digital area. Uh, we are using this system and it works very well. We are able to help people in different parts of the world and, and it works and it works very good. And we are able to prove it with your clients if you need it. Uh, third, contract must be used to protect themselves and have dispute resolution system or at least be part of an organization su such as DRC or STN. Third, if it's, it is necessary to know, understand the dispute resolution system for shipping claims, given the risk involved in the food transport. Thank you. That's my presentation. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much, Matthias. Um, I, I would still actually have a question, uh, uh, a comment as well. If you can you show against delay. Shipping yes. delay. Yes, of course. Can you ensure against delay? No, it was the shipping yes. company. We, it has some limitation, <coughs> the, 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 the general exactly. policy exclusion. So yes. yes. So some limitation in terms of, uh, of amount of money <coughs> that could be considered. And the legislation in general, I can speak about the Chilean legislation has limit as well. So I, 
I'm afraid that the, oh, in general the legislation will lie, the, the free system, rather than have this be a carbon has limitation on the on this. Okay, let's take, let's take an example. For example, a ship uh, is um, due to leave the ports of Hamburg hmm, on day one. Uh, but it will not leave on day one because there is a storm brewing up over the North Sea. So therefore, the ship is being delayed and the next port of call, let's say Denmark, not very far, doesn't, is not, is the ship doesn't sail. As a result, the uh, consignment of bananas in Aarhus cannot be sold at the price as expected. So that type of delay, can you, is that not covered? Is it covered or is it not covered? That is not covered because it's an act of the law. Definitely so, but let's say, let's make this slightly more interesting. The weather forecast that morning was that there was going to be a fair weather. Huh? Um, and the, the ship started to sail, but then decided there was a storm and uh, therefore called the next port and didn't actually go to the, to the next port. And you still have the delay. So again, so you could say, oh, it's an act of God. Maybe that in that case, not, because they, there are some ways to prevent. Exactly. Is so in other words, there is a, there is a weather forecast. And what you can say in some question, it's if the shipping company can be proved that they ignored a weather forecast and decided to sail, whether they shouldn't have sailed, and there's been a problem, it's a problem of the shipping company and not the receiver. Exactly. So no, these, are, these are cases, absolutely, the only actually time. a case like that. The all the, all the time, I remember we are facing, for example, the, the, in Chile, the cases of the strikes in the port that happened like four years ago. But the strike where, you may say, okay, strike, strike is covered, but the, the, the German uh, insurers, they decide to limit it completely and they take out that clause. And now they put it again. But in that time, it was uh, it, it does exist. In that time, the clouds. But we consider the company argue, no, this is this is force major, not out of force major. But it wasn't force major because it was feasible for them to know yes. that the people are going to for uh, for strike. Exactly. So in other words, and they didn't the forecast <coughs> better these days. In other words, if you can forecast better, that means actually the erosion. Uh, of the shipping line, they say, oh, we're going to have a fox majeure, fox majeure. And if they would say, it's fox majeure, I need advice. In other words, that's what they always try to say. In your advice, not my fault, someone else. <laughs> that's the way they would argue. Well, on the other hand, the shipping company would say, well, you didn't, get, you didn't deliver the container on time. Your container was late. Yes. How many containers don't arrive on time in the, in the port? So, so therefore, sometimes the, the, the boxes is left behind. They call them row boxes. Whose fault is that? That's the fault of the shipper because he didn't deliver the container when the shipper does. So there's basically there all these different areas. But I was going to ask you a very simple question. Um, we've seen a, a transition from conventional shipping to container shipping, and I think Chin is quite a good example because you still have quite a lot of conventional shipping in proportion to the total. Have you seen more claims in conventional or more claims in reefer containers? More claims in reefer containers. More claims in reefer Absolutely. Because it's the, the risk is divided. So, so, so you, you, there are different units, so at the end it fails. Unit fails and then, so you have, the risk is divided in many, many units. So it's more chances to have uh, problems, definitely. But it could be limited, the result, because if, if a, hold, if a chip, hold, ship hold goes off, the basic power failure, you can have a whole load. But with the container, you can have, unless you've got a power failure. It's limited. Limit, of course, limited, limited. in amount, because in the, in, the, in the conventional one, when you have a, then you have a big one. When you so have the other ones are limited, but many in terms of volume. Yeah. So again, so it's, it's horses for courses, yeah. as we say. Exactly. Yeah. So I wonder if there are any, any questions uh, for, the, for the audience. Just 
First of all, it's a, it's a reference. Those uh, the temperature recorders are a reference for in, in court. When you have problems with the temperature recorders, your own temperature recorder or the shippers' temperature recorders, then you need to see it. Maybe you f you're facing a problem. Uh, always, it's important to know where you put. In general, in container, you try to use two two te temperature recorders. Mm -hmm. uh, one in the in the coldest uh, point and the other one in the hottest point below the, the equipment and in the at, and at the end of the uh, where near the, the door I suppose it's the coldest part uh, those are the, the main por uh, parts um, and those uh, the, first of all you have the chance to uh, request a, uh, a validation by your by the company that sells the temperature recorders and always will take you to the official temperature recorders of the container where you will see, but those never are released by the company, um, except if you present a claim uh, in court against them, so they must show the records of the container's temperature recorder, and then the, the temperature, the official that came inside the container. So always, this will be, instrument will be witnesses necessary to prove uh, that uh, shipments fails uh, in the cold chain. So it is like a comparison of the uh, shipping company's temperature and also the ones you have with you. Yes, okay. Without your witness, you will never know that you your shipment face a temperature problem. Maybe you, you, you can suspicious, you can uh, raise an hypothesis about that, but not without your witness, <coughs> which are your temperature recorders that shows that will exist the problem that finally will take you to the official <coughs> registration which is the one that came with the container. So is there actually a, a list of the temperature recorders that is like uh, certified to use or and is certified by you or is by you? No, no, the certification is just uh, an alternative that you can use, uh, not necessary. It's basically the company tells you that the the, the product was in good shape and it works properly and, um, and, and the information that <coughs> is, is correct. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, this is a small comment on what he said. Uh, uh, the maritime companies don't need to show release any information because uh, they need to show the calibration certificate and it takes almost 50 days to calibrate those those units. It needs to be calibrated every six months at least. And that's why they don't want to release that information. I mean, the information, uh, it is usually, it's usually, uh, when uh, an equipment like that is not calibrated in the last, in the last year, uh, usually it's given wrong information. That's why the device, uh, the temperature device company, like the, the temperature logger, needs to provide a calibration certificate from every single one. And they're more usually accurate than the ones that are being reused on the machine of the uh, container, because the single user electronic devices are certified uh, every time. That's why it's a, it's a better way to have one of those ones and trust with those ones. And that's the reason why the uh, vessels or the containers uh, 
calibration uh, certificates, they hardly exist, but they don't want to release that, release that information. No, that's why. That's the typical issue that happens. They never want to release, instead, a, 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 the court order to do it. And the, the other thing is important, the temperature recorders, your temperature recorder of the shippers, uh, is to, to request the, uh, the claim with the with your insurance company <coughs> because they accept that they, they consider yeah we are facing a claim here and a real claim. Any um, the um, basically you were talking about being proactive and basically prevent anything from happening in the first place. And uh, from uh, from the post harvest standpoint, um, and since many of, of the audience here is, are basically partners that deal with exporters directly. Um, I would like you to clarify whether, uh, actually clarify that no matter what, no matter what system, no matter how many precautions, legal precautions, when there's a claiming situation, when, when something happens, when something goes south, uh, the exporter is always going to lose some. He can retrieve a big portion of it, but it's never going to actually get back all the value that, that, that he shipped if something happens. Is that correct? Well, of course, what we are doing here in prevention is to limit the, the, the problems. We will never replace the problem, always will exist. But, but in case of not doing that, uh, the, 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 your problems and your, loss, your losses will be much higher than those that you can expect uh, without uh, if you take the measures, necessary measures to avoid the problems, it's a it's a risky business from the begin from the very beginning up to the the you're selling the, your food and, and it's consumed. In the case of free consignment, you face so many many different problems. So it is important that you have that the shipper, grower, and shipper has the mentality of prevention. And I totally agree with you uh, in this. It's, it is difficult sometimes because here this is expensive, but it, I can tell you in the legal standpoint of view, uh, after that they faced problems in the past, they, they remember that and they try to avoid that in the future, so they take the measures. It reminds me like what happened sometime in our country that they put uh, green lights and uh, the red and green lights for, for cars just after accidents, you know? Sometimes happen that, uh, so so it's I think an, it's, a, it's an issue that sometimes our shippers face. Okay. Are there any other questions? If not, we're going to move on to our next speaker. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.